Yesterday here in Jupiter, Florida, Kyle Troop took the top seed in Group 2 of the PBA Tour Finals, and now the pro with a fro wants to win one match to make the championship round. We are back in Jupiter, Florida at Bolero. It's time for the Group 2 step ladder and see who will make it to the PBA Tour Finals. Championship round to take on Anthony Simonson as our live coverage of the PBA Tour Finals continues here on CBS Sports Network. Anthony Simonson was fabulous in the race to two victory over Jacob Buttriff to win Group 1. He is in the championship round. After qualifying yesterday, Kyle Troop and Chris Prather went back and forth as the leader before Troop was able to knock down 10 more pins to take the top seed today. 2020 Players' Championship winner Bill O'Neill, two-time PBA Tour Finals champ EJ Tackett, round out the field today. Welcome back to live coverage of the PBA Tour here on CBS Sports Network. This is Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson. Big theme today, RP, in this Group 2 step ladder to see who takes on Anthony Simonson. has got to be two-time PBA Tour Finals champ EJ Tackett. He told us this week he's never defended a title in his PBA career. This is his chance, but he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, he really does. He has to climb the ladder, obviously, and win every match to just to get to that title match. And he struggled uh, mightily yesterday. He struggled with uh, his technique, uh, struggled with ball reaction, struggled to just repeat shots. We'll see if he comes in today a little bit sharper uh, after the bowling that he did yesterday. He got some practice in, so we'll see if his game's in better shape. But all roads lead through Kyle Troop. I mean, uh, he shot 299 yesterday, almost had our second 300 of the event. Uh, and Kyle just really hung in there, dug in, and threw the strikes needed coming down the stretch to overtake Chris Prather late. Love it when he kisses the pick. That's awesome. Uh, but, yeah, did what he had to do and ended up uh, in the top C, or in that number one position by 10 pins. We'll have two step out of one game matches, Randy, but to win the group, a race to two victory is required. And Kyle Troop joined by Randy as the top seed, lane level. All right, Kyle, top seed's obviously the most enviable position to be in. Uh, your buddy Simonson made it uh, to, to the finals and kind of called you out and said, hey, man, I want Kyle. I'll see you in a couple hours. What do you have to do now to win this to face your buddy Simonson? So, Randy, you know, it's, uh, it's another day of bowling. Obviously, yesterday the goal was to get the number one seed. Uh, that's completed. But, you know, today it's another, it's another day. Uh, I've got to win one match, and that's all we're really focused on. Uh, we do have the dual pattern, so yeah, we're going to break it down to five shots on each lane and, you know, go from there. What uh, did you learn from yesterday that you can apply today? Uh, I think the big thing for me is speed control. You know, I got a little quick there on the 299, and then it kind of unraveled a little bit progressing through the next couple games. So uh, for me, you know, it's another big focus today. Just uh, focus on my speed control, stay in the moment, you know, give it one shot at a time. And is it urethane on the shorter pattern and reactive resin on the longer pattern for you today as well? Yeah, that's going to be the game plan going in. Obviously, you know, I'll be ready for the transition. It kind of happened yesterday. So, uh, you know, we've got our eyes open, but hopefully the urethane sticks with it throughout the show. All right, Kyle, thanks. Best of luck to you. Hey, Lots of great bowling to come. We might have two two-handers in the finale. Dave? Great stuff, Randy. And thanks for the time, Kyle Troop. Match one, O'Neal Tackett coming up. Two big superstars on the PBA Tour going head-to-head, -to -head, trying to climb the ladder toward the top seed, Kyle Troop. The 2020 PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Ready to resume. PBA Tour Finals, defending champ EJ Tackett, Bill O'Neill. Step ladder. Match coming up. Just one game. Hey, Dave, you want to know about the oil pattern? I sure do. Let's do it. All right, so the one on the right is shorter. It's the Marshall Holman. It's uh, 37 feet, and the players are going to play the extreme outside part of the lane like we saw 
in our last show. Petraglia, however, much longer. The players are going to play the deeper part of the lane and go much straighter. The right lane, the trickier of the two. He who conquers the right lane wins today. Here's E.J. Tackett in the finals of all three prior PBA Tour finals. E.J. Tackett likes this event, and that's pretty much an understatement since he's finished first, second, first. The last three Tour finals, he's pocketed almost six figures from this event alone. Lupton, Indiana, 27 years old. Eighth year on Tour for E.J. Tackett. Head-to-head -head with O'Neal, trying to climb the ladder toward Kyle Troop, the top seed. Race the two match will wrap up group two, and the winner of group two takes on Simonson for the title. All here live on CBS Sports Network. Good start for Tack at left lane. Yeah, take a look at Bill O'Neill winning his second major of his career earlier this year. The Players' Championship at Wayne Webb's place in Columbus. Had a great year in 2019 as well. Finished third in earnings and seventh in average. That was pretty fun to call. BDJ Tech at the top seed in Columbus that night. Seems like a long time ago, Randy. It does, doesn't it? Mm. It was back in February. So much has happened since. We hope everyone watching today is safe. And thanks for joining us for live coverage of the PBA Tour. 10-pin O'Neill. That stands for Bill. It's a, an interesting matchup for me because you've got two completely different styles here. You've got the raw power and athleticism of EJ Tackett, and then you have the precision and touch of Bill O'Neill. It's going to be fun to watch. 10 pin. Right lane. Randy and Norm earlier in our broadcast here from Jupiter pointed out that it's the tricky one. 935 overall, game by game for O'Neill qualifying here yesterday. Third seed, 233 average. Tackett did not have a great day. 854 pins total for EJ through the four. O'Neill, second frame, you bet. Remember yesterday we watched this group basically disintegrate the longer pattern but uh, more so than group one because they had one extra right hander and we saw how the left the, the, the especially the left lane just get destroyed um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this pattern holds up for these four right handers remember no southpaw uh, in group two back to EJ oh nice shot big trouble a lot left here to deal with. Three, four, seven, nine, ten. Three, four, six, seven, ten. Six, Three, right. four, six, six seven, seven ten. ten. Sorry, yes. No, you're good. Uh, so he's going to get the ball over here to the right of the three pin, Dave, and he's going to slide that three pin over here into the four and the seven. The ball will take out the six and the ten. Let's see. No. Drop instead. Only a seven pin count. Open frame. Early struggles for a defending champ. Interesting how he chose to try to convert that split. Instead of going cross lane at it, he moved to the far right and threw it straight up the edge. His last PBA Tour title was in Vegas. We call it here on CBS Sports Network a year ago, Randy. He looks a little frustrated, just like we saw in qualifying here yesterday. Not the confident look we were accustomed to seeing with EJ Tack at least a 10 pin. Well, uh, his tour representative, Brett Spangler, told me that he was going with a completely different game plan today, and he was going to use two different urethane balls on both lanes. So he's going with urethane on both lanes, two completely different pieces of equipment. That's a big change. There's a 10 pin. You on board with that? You agree? I, I don't. I think EJ is too good with what he does naturally and doesn't need to do that. I'd like to see him play the lanes like Simonson did. You know, 
feed it to the right with with uh, with his power and his hand on the right lane and move in and just get all over it on the left lane. Cool TV numbers, impressive for Bill O'Neill. Hall of Fame credentials. That strike takes advantage of the open frame and a 26 pin lead for Bill O'Neill. And take a look here from profile. Notice how Billy keeps his chin up. He tries to keep his shoulders from leaning too far forward too early. And then you can see where his hand is doing right there at the bottom of the swing and that hand right up the back of the ball. It's beautiful. But you notice how his chin is up, Dave? That's to keep his shoulders from tipping early. And there's the, back. That's great. Good observation. And, oh. and, and there's the touch I'm talking about. You can just see the touch out of his hand mm -hmm. and what he can do to get his bowling ball to read the pattern properly. He calls himself a throwback. Shot making skills Bill O'Neill's got. Old school in a lot of ways. He went through a couple of years of, uh, of carnage out here where he really struggled and then he started to change his game and, and then wasn't him anymore. And went back to being him, fought through it, figured out in order to compete out here, I gotta make a couple of tweaks. And one of those tweaks for him was slower ball speed. And the next thing you know, he's he's back and back to winning and back to having huge years. So um, it was quite a testament of, of how he came kind of full circle, if you will. Wow. Yeah. Flirting with the channel. And BJ's using the whole lane right now. New approach. Randy talked about it after speaking with Brett Spangler, his tour rep. TV number is for EJ. We talked about great success in this event. 2017 won the first ever PBA Tour Finals in Orlando. Next year, Detroit lost to Belmo in the finals. We beat Buttruff last year. A lot of work to do. That's a good start in that direction with a strike on the left lane. That's a double. So you saw I was playing the right lane. Take a look at the left lane. Uh, real straight up 12. Only just a little bit of head belly. You know what? You come in with a game plan and you have to be committed, and he is. O'Neill tries for a 36 pin lead and a four bagger. Does it perfectly. Great shot for Bill O'Neill, and he knows it. He's a shot maker. You know, when you talk about throwback, he's a shot maker, a uh, medium rev rate kind of guy. You see how the hand kind of opens and gets inverted, meaning his fingers point to the right. That keeps his elbow in. It's a great. Uh, it's a great tool to have for the folks at home watching. Try to get your hand to go out at release because when the hand goes out, the elbow goes in. When the hand goes in, the elbow goes out. Left lane. No deal. Great start continues in this game. Another strike for Bill O'Neill. Look at that lead of 46 pins. Five in a row, Randy. The nickel. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's looking pretty good right now. If he goes off the sheet, guess what he shoots? 290. Don't go anywhere, folks. Real deal, Bill O'Neill has got himself a nice lead here. 46 pins with a five bagger. Batting into Tackett's sixth frame. Chance for a turkey for him to cut the deficit to 36 pins. Here's EJ, right lane, got to get it going right now. And he leaves a four pin. Oh, come on. One game match, and your opponent starts out the way Bill O'Neill has. It's like getting a swift kick to the gut. It'll really take the wind out of you. One pin loss, as we told you, documented in Columbus to Phil O'Neill at the Players' Championship. Third place at the Worlds, won by Jason Belmonte in Vegas. Here's the two seed, but lost to Simonson. Former player of the year. Already 13 titles, only 27 years old. Tremendous talent. Couple majors, eighth year on tour. Come on. 
That's a good sign, but it's a seventh frame, and O'Neill is trucking right now. He's going to need to strike out and get some help from this man. Seven-time member of Team USA, by the way. It's impressive. Great career. Oh, yeah. Future Hall of Famer. He didn't Whoa. like that. Whoa. Whoa. And that's the exact help EJ Tackett needs. Suddenly a break. 2-4-10 up here for O'Neal as he flirts with the channel. Can't cover. Open frame. Door okay. open. Okay, it's kind of static in this thing. Just, we'll shut it off on the other. We appreciate Bill wearing the earpiece, talking to us, but it's distracting right now, so that's the priority. Yeah. <laughs> Take it out, make sure he can focus and yep. get back to the matter at hand. Each with an open frame now. Critical eighth frame. Up 32. But EJ's working on a strike. Left lane on Neal. Response. Yeah, beautiful. Nice comeback shot for Bill O'Neill on the left lane. Anytime you see this this kind of action with a six pin, Dave, that, that's a that's a really good sign. That means the ball's going through the pins the right way. Attack it, must strike now. He strikes here in the eighth and the ninth. It'll certainly give Bill O'Neill something to think about. Really needs it here. Looking for a 22 pin deficit, but it's a hot shot and the six pin stands. Misses the one three pocket again. What are you doing? Well, if you're Bill O'Neill, that's exactly what you wanted to see. Uh, you didn't want EJ to keep straying him, and um, this is uh, starting to look like it'll be EJ's final game of this event, and Bill O'Neill will move on to face Chris Prather. Two seed after four games of qualifying. It's all live here on CBS Sports Network. The entire event, start to finish, live on our air for a second straight year. So glad to be a part of it. We we'll have live sports back on the PBA Tour. Tough, tough day for the defending champ. He's never failed to make the finals of the PBA Tour finals. That is apparently about to end here today. Yeah. One of only two players that have made all four of these events, him and Anthony Simonson. To get here, you've got to be top eight in points over the two-year span. We'll be a tour points list. Not easy. O'Neill's making it look easy right now, Randy. Right in that one-three pocket. Crenches. All ten. Pins back into the pit. Impressive shot. Max numbers looking good for Bill. That was a gorgeous shot. Great touch. Got his hand right where he wanted it at release and just let go. The bowling ball behaved perfectly. You saw the max scores. O'Neill, 42 pin lead, pretty much uh, over with. Just needs to keep it on the lane to stay behind the foul line. Does that and more. 52 pin lead, wrapping things up here in the group two first match. And it's mathematically over. Chris Prather is next in a one-game match for Bill O'Neill. Winner of that one, the race to two against the top seed, Kyle Troop. Yeah, I think O'Neill would like to get uh, like to get a little revenge, if you will, 
because uh, you, you remember what Prather did to him at the PBA playoffs last year in Portland, so, Maine. He really dismantled Bill O'Neill, owned him in uh, the finals of that event. Won a lot of money that day. Yeah, he did. And I know Bill O'Neill would like nothing better than to give him a little payback, <laughs> even though he probably wouldn't tell you that. As a player, you always kind of... Oh, I'm sure he thinks about it. Oh, but yeah. But Bill is super like, low-key and very classy. Yeah. Oh, and so is Chris Prather. Absolutely. You know, they're both classy Absolutely. guys. I, I, I'm not trying to make it sound like, you know, Bill's out for blood, but it wouldn't bother him to beat Chris Prather and get, get to the title. <laughs> Absolutely so. not. Thank you. Great bowling for Bill O'Neill. Yep. 255. So EJ Tackett. And the run of the championship round of the PBA Tour Finals will come to a crashing halt here in Jupiter, Florida today. It's going to be a disappointing couple days for EJ. Qualifying fourth, 182 of this last game of qualifying. And then, unfortunately, just couldn't get it going against... That's really hard to do. O'Neal here today. Idiot. Yeah, he's just he's kind of beating himself up right yeah, now. He's saying, you know, all I had to do is get it to the right. And... Um, you know, the, shot, the last shot that he threw on that lane, he said, God, I couldn't even throw it bad enough to make it go Brooklyn. But all he had to do was feed it a little bit more to the right. Of course, these guys make it look so easy anyway. Eight TV shows last year for EJ. They went to the PBA Tour Finals. A tremendous season. Oh, man. I One in Vegas. hate myself. But no so win here today. And well, EJ's being hard on himself right now. It's tough. Yeah. He's got. He's as competitive as they come. He's got plenty of life. <laughs> Young guy, he's, twenty-seven years old. He's got plenty of game left. Don't but you worry about EJ. He'll be fine. It's always the big theme when we meet with him. Talks about Tiger Woods. And Tiger Woods does not go to a golf tournament to finish second. Good luck, Mike. Yeah. That's EJ's mantra and approach. Be like Tiger and win it. But it doesn't happen today. Bill O'Neill, 255, 213. Randy, he's moving on to see Chris Prather next. Yeah, but he's going to have to bring his A game against Prather because Prather, he's probably bowling as well as anybody in this event. Get up and start your day with Boomer and Geo as they break down all the latest updates in sports that are sure to fuel your day. Weekday mornings at 6 right here on CBS Sports Network. Updated stepladder bracket for you in Group 2. We know Anthony Simonson won Group 1 here at the PBA Tour Finals in Jupiter, Florida. Easy win, Bill O'Neill over the defending champ, E.J. Tackett. Now it's O'Neill Prather. One game match. Race to two in the final for group two. And the winner takes on Simonson later today. Bill O'Neill, uh, let's talk about game one. You know, I, I keep commenting about how great your touch is. What are you trying to do physically at release to get your ball to read both oil patterns correctly? Yeah, so it's not as much a difference uh, physically today than yesterday. Um, it's with my uh, ball choices. So yesterday I had a lot, uh, way too much uh, shine on the ball, and it was just it made me throw it way too slow. And every shot that was a little firm just uh, you know went went too long. And I was really fortunate to even bowl the scores that I bowled. Um, so today I put a lot more surface on my ball um, just to get it to slow down. So the shots like I threw in the fourth frame last game where they got a little bit right, a little bit quick, they got a better chance. So. Uh, you know, I'm just uh, I'm executing similarly to yesterday, but just uh, put myself in a better spot with better uh, better equipment choices. All right, Bill, thanks. Good luck yeah. in this match. Thank you. Thanks for the time, Bill. Great access. Just before he's about to compete here, head-to-head -head with Prather, and he'll take the earpiece out. He doesn't want to be distracted. Good move. And a five-bagger in that easy one over attack at 255, 213. Strikes in 10 of 12 frames, as we saw. Here we go, match two. Great bowling ahead. As live coverage continues of the PBA Tour Finals here on CBS Sports Network. O'Neill left lane gets it started. Ten pin, everything but fall. Catch a little bit. Uh, about nine and a half there, Dave. Put that down the scorebook. Can see some put that down <laughs> nine and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost. Cross lane, temp in. Cecil did write it down. Yeah. 
Well, well, whether you like Shark, Clark, Shark, Kent, Shark, whatever. I like to call him the human ATM, Dave, because this guy knows how to make big bucks in a hurry. Made a couple hundred thousand last year in a very short period of time by winning uh, the Tournament of Champions and uh, also by winning the inaugural PBA playoffs. You know, we talked about him beating O'Neill uh, at the PBA playoffs, but he also beat O'Neill at the Tournament of Champions. Climb the ladder to Climb win. Climb the ladder and beat Bill O'Neill this year, Tournament Champions. So here we go. The rematch today here in Jupiter, Florida. This guy's good, man. I, I mean, let make no mistake about it. This guy is good. He's going way out. On the right lane. I'm not sure how many titles he's going to win over his career, but I'm going to I'm going to venture to say it's going to be a lot. Only 28 years old. Won the Strike Derby in this building last month. There are the qualifying numbers from yesterday. Left lane for Prather. All ten back again. Well, they're playing the left lane a lot straighter than uh, Group 1 did. They're a lot farther to the right. I mean, that's straight up the second arrow. But being able to do that, so let, let's examine that and talk about it for a second. Sure. Right lane, he's throwing it dead sideways to the gutter. Left lane, he's throwing it straight up 10. you got to have some talent to do that. These guys... It's a huge difference. These guys are good for a reason. I loved his explanation on what changes he made. So he basically said, I put surface, basically what, what, what they're doing is they're taking sandpaper, only they don't call it sandpaper anymore because now it's, an, it's called an Avalon pad. But it's a coarse pad of maybe 1,000 grit or 2,000 grit, 1,500, and then they take it and they sand the bowling ball with that. And then he said, I wanted to get the ball to slow down. Well, what that means is more surface on the ball it reads the lane sooner, which makes the speed come down, the ball slows down, and then it comes around the corner. Think about this, Dave. If you had something that was super shiny, mm -hmm. right, really slick, and you threw it down a lane filled with oil, it would scoot, right? Like it, like, like it just hit a sheet of ice. It would just like accelerate. And that's what they're trying to get the ball not to do. Love that breakdown. It's a complex game, Randy. Right lane for Prather. Close match. He's locked in, clearly. Well, that's a big change on his approach in that lane. Well, watch, how much, three. watch how much straighter this is. So two different oil patterns, two different balls, two different lines in the pocket. For both players. Wow. Great start continues. Pretty impressive. Front four for Prather. Looks calm, looks locked in, looks ready to compete today against Bill O'Neill. His game looks so simple, yet he does some pretty amazing things with his release and with his hand. Back to the three seed. It's a high shot, 6-10, remade up for Bill O'Neill. Bad shot, ball checked up early on him. It looked like he got it as far right as he needed to, and sure enough, it goes through the nose. At least he didn't split. Covers. Stays in contention. Yeah. The Prater's been perfect so far. A lot of working out for Bill O'Neill. Big jogger during the pandemic, trying to stay in shape. Practice a lot when he can get access to his local bowling centers from suburban Philadelphia. That looks good, left lane. Big shot.
you know, um, the thing you talked about Bill was doing? You call it jogging? Yeah, Ron Burgundy calls it jogging. <laughs> Anytime you can make an Anchorman reference, I'm good with it. Have you seen Will Ferrell's latest movie on have, Netflix? Have not. <laughs> you see. Pray they're perfect through four. He's an Icelandic rock star. That's all I'm going to say. Perfection continues here for Chris Prather. That was sweet. Great shot for the righty. Just carbon copy of the last four he's thrown, oh. really. Or at least the last three on that lane. Look at him carve it to the right, man. It's just... And now watch, folks, how much straighter he goes on this lane. And why, you ask? This lane has got nine more feet of oil on it. Looking for the front six, trying to stay perfect. Not this time. The four pin spoils the 300 game, but he's got himself a big lead. Nice run to begin this match for Chris Prather. Yeah, just maybe a pinch left. And it's all right. Four pins okay. If he strikes out, he shoots 279. So that's not all bad. Originally from Pensacola, Florida. A few hours West and north of us here in Jupiter on the Atlantic coast. Now lives in suburban Chicago. Won some big matches and big money over the last year. This guy's won a lot of matches in his great career. Bill O'Neill Prather continue head to head for the PBA Tour Finals in Jupiter, Florida. Next. Big lead, Chris Prather over Bill O'Neill. And let's talk to Bill real quick. Bill, uh, halfway through this match, trailing by 31, uh, do you get the feeling that at some point you're going to have to strike on every ball to win this game? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much all of them. Um, you know, i got to make a move here on the on the right lane and, uh, you know, move probably two or three left here and um, you know, try to give myself a, a little bit more angle so the shots that are a little bit, a little bit in have a chance. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll see how it works out. Thanks for your time, Bill. It's great stuff. Just before he's about to resume competition, earpiece goes out and focused again. Eight strikes so far between these two great bowlers. Two seed and a three seed ahead to head. Kyle Troop, the top seed of group two. Anthony Simonson won group one to make the championship round. Card to 21, he turned away from that one because the 310 is up. What on earth is that? Well, you heard him say he was going to move farther left, and, and I'm not sure there was enough angle through the front part of the lane, but that ball hit a lot more than he thought it would. Right now, Chris Prather is, like, uh, licking his chops. The last couple of times these guys have faced off, it's been all Prather. It's a pretty high-stakes pull, like Prather's one. Nice little baby split conversion. I, I'll, I'll tell you. Who, sorry, Dave. I'll tell you who else the Prather's taken care of pretty good and pretty handily lately is Bill O'Neill's uh, tour roommate, Jason Belmonte. Belmont's watching, by the way. In his I know he is. He sent me a text earlier. To, it was 3.30 in the morning, Australian time. When he, what did time, he tell you that? What time is it? <laughs> well, it's got to be like uh, 6 a.m. now. Tomorrow. Oh, come on. Google that. Will you find out? Ask Siri what time it is in Australia. Okay, I'm being told it's 4:45 a.m., which means that he either had an all-night bender or or he gets up real early. <laughs> I'm going to go with the second. He one. told me in a text that from Australia by the way, <laughs> that he just practiced. Yeah. <laughs> And he wanted to make sure to stream this live. Oh, that's great. Because, you know, he's Belmo. He's got to keep up oh to date with what's God. happening. Look out. Rather than like that one, that's the reason he didn't like it. Well, now, let's hmm. see. That changes the complexion of things a bit. Door opened for O'Neill. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Crack. Four, six, seven. Yeah, you know how to make this one, Dave. You get the ball over to the right side, over into here, and then you th throw that uh, three pin over into the four, seven. You got to kind of cut it into the four. 
Great to ball. Cover. Tough oh. shot. Can't do it. Open frame. Mm. And a new match. Now it's only 15 pins. Um, and if O'Neill strikes in the eighth and ninth, if he strikes in the eighth and ninth, he'll take the lead. It's gotten interesting. So max score for Bill O'Neill is still 248. Max score for Prather, 253. Pretty interesting uh, how things can turn with one errant shot. You know, Bill kind of threw that same shot and only left the 310. Prather leaves the 3467. Lane, let's see how he responds. Very well, thank you. Those pins had no chance. Crunches 10 back into the pit with authority. So he does have the 15 pin lead, but here comes Bill O'Neill in the eighth, working on a strike with a chance to cut into it and make this very interesting down the stretch. Big shot here. O'Neill on the right lane here in the eighth frame. He will finish the match on this very same lane. Oh, Jesus. Cut it to five, but he didn't like it. That's why it's in I the, got to the right anyway. Oh my goodness. He just lost that ball. Whoa. Whoa. Boy, his touch and feel oh. shot making was so good in, game, in his right first anyway. win in game one. That is a rarity on the PBA team. Jesus, God. And that's way high. And these are 3 6 10. So a huge loss in count. And he's down by 31. Had a chance to cut it to a five-pin deficit with a strike there in the eighth. And wow. Well, you saw those two shots, right? So a little bit right, and it goes in the gutter. And a little bit left, it goes high. And it's amazing how easy Anthony Simonson this two made. This stuff stinks. <laughs> I just want a bowl on this one. <laughs> he just said this, this, these two patterns stink. Think too much? I want a bowl on the left lane only. But uh, it's sure. amazing how easy Simonson made him look. Right. And Prather Seems making them look pretty easy. So what a range of emotions. Prather has the open, then sees the gutter ball. And it's back up 31. Yeah. Foundation frame to go up 41 pins and basically put it away. Ring in 10 pin. Max score for O'Neill now is 212. Which based on the last time he was up on that right lane, uh, didn't fare very well and Chris Prather is in the 220s if he continues to mark out down the lane oh and he missed it on the right lane which you said Randy right our broadcast today was the tougher of the two conquer the right lane and you mm. win O'Neill's got to finish on that lane he just got seven total and two balls the last time he was up on that lane and now Prather's max score is 221. Wow. But if he doesn't double in the 10th frame, O'Neill can still win this game. <laughs> Man, some peaks and valleys here in this one. Good news for Prather as he gets to finish on the left <sighs> lane. There are the max numbers. 10th frame off an open left lane Prather. That's a response. Over. It's not even a freaking match. Stupid. May I have a re-rack, please? Good re-rack? I think so. Gives him a little time to collect his thoughts and get his get his head right. He's not he's not overly um, excited about the last couple of shots he's thrown and the performance thus far. Disgusted by missing the ten pin. There's a strike he needed. Yeah, keep it on the lane, stay behind the foul line. He's gonna bowl against Troop for the group two the group two title. <laughs> uh, he can smile now. It's been up and down in this one. Oh, he's laughing because O'Neill said something. I couldn't hear it. 
Eight to two, gets 10, and gets the win. So Chris Prather will take on Kyle True for the right to take on Anthony Simonson, PBA Tour Finals Championship round here at Jupiter, Florida. It was a wild one. Throws a 221, Bill O'Neill. Who unfortunately had a late collapse. There's a strike of the right lane. And a hey, clapping because I stayed in the lane? Little that, sarcastic. That <laughs> you know, if, he's, Look there. if he strikes in the eighth frame, this, this match is over, he yeah. moves on. He wins. Mm. It said he went, he went zero and then seven. Zero pins. In all my years, Randy, covering the PBA Tour, I don't know, two, three gutter balls stink. total? Maybe. Jesus. Maybe. Yeah, it usually doesn't happen a lot, but it happens. It's one of the best players in the world right now. Absolutely. He's bid for a 13th career PBA Tour title. We'll have to wait. Still a good run for O'Neal. Knocked off. It's 255. Good first game. Here today for EJ Tackett. But game two, not to be for Bill O'Neill. 221 to 11. Prather will climb the ladder. And now it's a race to two to take on Kyle Troop, our top seed. Randy, it's going to be a blast to watch these two guys head ahead. Great bowling on the way. Welcome back, Bolero in Jupiter, Florida. PBA Tour Finals. Ready now for the stepladder. Championship round of Group 2, Dave and Randy. And RP, that was a wild match we saw a moment ago between Bill O'Neill and Chris Prather. It's a rarity, RP, to see a gutter ball on the PBA Tour. Well, you know what? It, it, what happens when you're trying to get the ball to a certain spot and you, you right miss hand. hit it or you get it going that way too quickly on that pattern on the right lane, it's going to go in. Bill lane. You know, Chris is a great spare shooter, and he just a uh, little, little uh, I think, lack of focus on that, that shot. He threw a really good shot and left that 10 pin, but he rebounded nicely when he needed a double in the 10th frame and got it done. Prather advances. Troop is next. Had your afternoon off to an unbeatable team as Tiki Barber and Brandon Tierney are bringing a fan and player perspective to all the latest sports news. Don't miss Tiki and Tierney weekdays at 3 on CBS Sports Network. Time now for this Go Bowling with Randy segment. We're going to take a question for Randy from PBA social media. All right, RP, are you ready? Rick Holtmeyer asks, how do you prepare for tournament day? Do you have any rituals you'd like to get ready for your play with? Well, um, I, I don't think I ever had any rituals. Um, I did have uh, uh, some stuff that I would make sure that I got done prior to the start of the tournament. I always wanted to make sure that my equipment uh, was up to snuff, that I had the proper surfaces done to it. Um, I think instead of ritual, it was more superstitious than anything else. And B I've got Bill O'Neill here to help me with this. But Bill, like if I had a good block, I would make sure that I ate at the same restaurant. Uh, I took the same exact route from the hotel to the bowling center and back. Um, sometimes I'd wear the same shirt. What about yourself? Yeah, that seems a little excessive. I wouldn't do any of that. <laughs> um, most of my rituals are uh, wake Belmo up, uh, <laughs> make sure that Belmo has breakfast, uh, get him to the center on time, and then hopefully I have a good day too. <laughs> Yeah, I, I never had that problem. Well, actually, sometimes my uh, my tour roommates would have to wake me up. All right, so let's talk about that last match. Um, I mean, your first your first match that you bowled, your touch was so so just spot on and perfect. But then, obviously, the lane started to transition, forced you a little bit deeper. What happened specifically on the right lane? Yeah, any time for me when I have to like get my angles that that steep, um, it's 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 hard for me, and it's something I really have to, to focus on. And then I, what ends up happening, obviously, in the, like what happened in the eighth frame, um, I try to be too perfect, and I slow everything down, and 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 that's what happened. And then um, you know, uh, went in the gutter. So <laughs> and then the second one wasn't any better. So uh, I was pretty tapped out at that point. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I bet you that Belmo's at home watching. By the way, he's been texting us throughout the telecast. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of text message he's going to leave you after the eighth frame, but hopefully he's not too hard on you. He he knows me uh, well enough to know that he, like, I'm I'm okay right now, but um, he's not going to text me for a little while. I bet. Okay, yeah. and and he didn't send any uh, text like with advice or hey, uh, good luck, mate, or anything before the start of this. 
No. You haven't heard from him? No. It's all these about So, so he, about? all these claims from yeah. him about you being his mate and all that, it's malarkey. When he has to get to and from places. Right, yeah, unless he needs time. something yeah. from Bill O'Neill, then he talks to Bill. <laughs> then we're going to send it back to Dave Ryan. Thanks, Bill. All right, you got it. All right, Bill, thanks for the time. That's great access. Really good sport after the gutter ball in that tough eighth frame. Troop Ray, they're up next. Race to two, match three. PBA Tour Finals are going to terminate group two winner here today live on CBS Sports Network. There's Kyle Troop, top seed, group two, tremendous bowling. Yesterday in qualifying, including a 299 game, he came so close to perfection, as did Jacob Buttrip with his 300 yesterday in qualifying. Step ladder here. O'Neill got by the fending champ EJ Tackett easily, then trouble for Bill against Chris Prather. And he loses by 10 pins, so now it's the race to two. Win two games, you're in. If it's tied 1-1, then a ninth and 10th frame roll off to determine the winner in match three the champ of group two to take on Anthony Simonson. Next. Troop, there it is. And it was there yesterday, wasn't it, my partner, Dave Ryan, when he shot 299. Got it down the lane just a little too fast, as he told us, and came in just a bit light. But also, how about that doubles win once again with his partner, Jesper Svensson. Fun to watch this guy. Hashtag pick it out. <laughs> He's got a few hashtags. Four just time titleist. He's fun to be around. Just a guy. just a fun, good kid, man. He is so much fun and and hilarious. He's wearing the earpiece for us. All today. business now, right? That's right. Left lane gets us started. That's a high shot. Whoa. Top seed. Some early trouble. Well, we've seen that one before. The three, four, six, seven. He's going to try to get it to the right of the three pin and sling it over into the four seven. But that one went right through the nose and he paid for it. To cover. How about Converts. you? Fair ball still hot. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great start for Kyle Troop. It can go either way there. And what happened last if time? If you don't convert that difficult spare. Lose some momentum, lose energy early. Instead, he comes through. Great shot and great conversion. <laughs> and he said the spare ball's still hot. There you go. Nine for 12. Prather in that win over Bill O'Neill. Right lane gets started. Second game. Perfect shot. All 10 into the pit. The direction through the front part of the lane on that right lane has to be really, really good in order to hit the pocket. And Chris Prather has been almost perfect. The left lane's a lot different. You can kind of hold it on line because of the longer oil pattern and get away with a little bit more on that left lane, but not the right lane. Oh, God. He didn't like it. Well, that turned out just fine, didn't it? I'm not sure what he thought the miss was, if, if, if it was right, but it sure ended up in the right spot, didn't it? Oh, God. Thank you. Just fine in the end. Twenty-nine-year-old from North Carolina, back up. Oh, man, this is a shot. Ten pin stands. Going with the, the urethane ball on the right lane and reactive resin on the left. Drive home the PBA Doubles Championship in Indy. The win that you and I call Randy in Jonesboro, Arkansas. Two hands got his 10 pin, got his mark. As he told us in the pre-match interviews, it was it's tough. I mean, so hard on everyone, of course all over the world with the pandemic and wish all of our bowling fans the best. Hope they're safe right now watching this great action. But Kyle was bowling so well. I mean, just another case of someone's great season being derailed. Yeah. It's a different world we live in now, Dave. Sure. It's high. 3610 standing for Kyle Troop. 
Well, he needs to figure out what to do on that left lane because he's got high both times on it. Maybe move a little bit farther left and increase the angle. Covers. Spare ball still hot. And that spare ball was just fine. <laughs> This is a race to two, so win two games, you'll advance, win group two, take on Anthony Simonson, the group one winner, which comes up next here on CBS Sports Network. Our live coverage continues from Jupiter, Florida. That champion will be the winner of the PBA Tour Finals. If it's tied, then we're going to have a 9th and 10th frame roll-off, which with these bowlers, it's going to be an even matchup, Randy. That could happen. Yeah. Very easy. I think this match, it's only frame three, but... I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this match goes to sudden death. I, I, I don't have a winner in mind yet, but I think, I think they end up splitting one game apiece, and this is going to go to a roll-off. That could be exciting. Uh, spare. It's a USA member, former board at Wichita State, Chris Prater. You can call him Clark Kent, Shark Kent. Superman. He's got a lot of nicknames. Yeah. I notice he answers to them all. You, you know when you're good is when you have a lot of nicknames. <laughs> I only had one. You know what my nickname was? I'm almost afraid to ask, but go ahead. Spike. Okay. That's pretty good. That's cool. Why Spike? What is that? Well, I don't know where... Is there an origin story? There's a strike There's no story. There's no, not even a story behind it. My, my old tour roommates, Ron Palumbi Jr. and Sam Macaron used to call me Spike. And I have no idea where they got spiked from. I didn't have spiked hair. I didn't wear leather spiked jackets. I didn't have, like, black leather boots. No reason to call me Spike whatsoever. Clearly, you look like a Spike. <laughs> oh, clearly. I mean, it's a good... <laughs> a lot worse clearly. Than names, believe me. There There's Brayther. With the lead here, looking good, and troop strikes on that right lane, trying to find a groove here against Chris Brayther. Got a while ago, it's a... Race to two without a total pinfall over two games. Good thing is if you do have a struggle in the first game, you can bounce back and win game two and the roll-off. Knocked off the Hall of Famer in the championship in Jonesboro. Oh, singles win. There's a nice-looking shot left lane for Kyle True. Hey, Dave, guess what? Hmm. It's now a three-pin match uh, here in game one. Possible ball change for Troop 2 on that left lane. Back to Prather. Uh, that ball was a, reaction there. That was a ball change for Prather. Mm -hmm. Strikes in the fifth, up 13 pins now. And game one of this race to two. In two games, and you win group two for the right to take on Anthony Simonson in the championship round. Portland Lumberjacks, that was incredible. What a scene. They stormed the lanes in Portland, Maine. Talk about enthusiasm. Left lane, yes. No let up in Chris Prather. He just applies pressure and he just keeps striking and doesn't let up. Visit PBA.com to check out officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. Items include PBA hats, t-shirts, and custom jerseys, including replica jerseys of the PBA star players. Head to PBA.com and click on the Shop PBA link to get shopping. Strike streak at five in a row between these two superstars. The top seed of Group 2 in the Race to Two match rolls on here. Live coverage on CBS Sports Network of the 2020 PBA Tour Finals from Jupiter, Florida. 
Dave, I'm going to talk to Kyle now and ask Kyle, uh, Kyle, what's going on with the two lanes, and are, are you feeling comfortable with uh, the changes that you've made and with your ball reaction? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the the right lane's pretty good. You know, wrap ten and strike. Uh, obviously, I picked the wrong part of the lane to start with on the left lane. Uh, you know, made the ball change, got the break. So I feel like we've got the transition figured out. But uh, you know, I'm down in the match. So I need to keep striking right now because he looks pretty lined up. Thanks, Kyle. Good luck. Kyle is known as one of the most charismatic bowlers out there, and pretty funny guy. But he's all business right now, isn't he? I he would is agree. Locked yes. in. Look at the max numbers Absolutely. there. Third overall match here today. Race the two rolls on. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and Troop gets a break. No Huge. seven ten strike okay. instead. Huge break. Make a better one than that. Come on. See how he puts his fingers in, rolls that wrist up underneath the ball. No thumb hole, folks. There are the stats. Left lane. Group keeps it going. Yeah, and he did exactly what he had to do to keep the pressure on Prather. But what a great ball change that he made on that left lane. Watch this. This is perfect. Fourth arrow out to about eight. Four bagger for Troop. Prather has the turkey works on a four bagger here as well. Try to go back up by seven. Seventh frame for Prather. Big shot on the way. Can't deliver as he gets the 10 pin. Well, he made a nice ball change as well. When he saw that one shot kind of quit when it wiggled down lane, I believe it was in the third frame. And so Chris makes a ball change, and this is a really good shot that doesn't strike. And you can see just by that reaction. Things are getting interesting. The spare here, it's a two pin game. Cross lane 10 pin, got this one. He's excited after missing one. Good work. Thank you for the match. pity clap. We do not have fans uh -huh. here, safety first. PBA Tour and CBS Sports Network, so. Chris, do his best. As are all our great bowlers without a live crowd. And of course, there's a much different atmosphere. Left lane, here he comes with the big strike. Chris Prather delivers. <sighs> Troop down two. Kyle in the driver's seat with his four bagger. Kind of interesting the way the two players are playing that left lane. I mean, they're just completely different. Kyle's two arrows left of Chris, and one player's going dead straight, one player's hooking it. Big shot here coming up for Kyle Troop. Trying to go up by a pin. Looking for help oh. across the deck, and the 10 pin is left alone. Yeah, a little unlucky with that shot there, and it's probably going to cost him game one. He needed that hit, and he needed to keep the pressure on. I wish Norm was here so that we could have a discussion about these urethane bowling balls. I just don't like, I, I don't like what I see. They're good for like a game and then and then all of a sudden, and, and they're really good at allowing bowlers to go straighter when the lanes maybe are a little iffy. But I mean, they're, to me, they're so unpredictable. The last shot that he threw prior to that went high. That shot there looks pretty good. It goes light. I mean, to me, they just look so unpredictable after a few shots. You know, you watch the reactive resin go down the lane. Simonson used reactive resin on both the short pattern and the long pattern. And if nothing else, 
He always knew what his ball was going to do if he threw it correctly and if he threw it well. Same thing with Chris, Chris Prather, using Reacto on both lanes. If, they, if it leaves their hand correctly in the right direction, they know exactly what it's going to do. I'm not so sure that's the case with, with the urethane bowling balls, at least after some transition has taken place. Can't wait for my phone to light up now. I think it is already. Foundation frame Prather. Looking for help. 10 pin. Can't get it. Trying to go up by. The strike so bad. 13 pins, but just can't quite deliver. Hey, uh, Dave, you remember what I said at the start of the show? Yes. What was it? That this is going to go into sudden death. <sighs> no, before that. Oh, before that? The right lane. Conquer the right lane. You're going to win it. Well, the right lane has been challenging all day long. You say a lot of things. I'm trying to track it all. It's not easy. Well, I get paid by the word. <laughs> oh, there's a 10 pin. He's got it. Right again. Yeah. Not happy with that right lane. Randy called it early, along with our I have a re -rack, please. expert commentary. Is Fred that takes a re-rack from Norm Duke on our last show. Hey, Dave, trace your memory banks and tell me, think about hmm. the players that, that we've seen who did the best on the right lane that you can remember. Simonson? I think so. I mean, you know, Cecil, our stats guy, maybe, you know, he he, he probably has uh, the correct number of who threw the most strikes on that right lane. But I'll tell you what, I'll take Simonson right now on a bet. Yeah. Wow. For help, seven pin, no nudge, it stands. Hey, guess what? Uh, Troop can step up here and throw one strike in the 10th frame and win game one of this race to two. Yep, there's go, there goes my phone. Del Ballard, Hall of Famer, said, I think you are correct. All thank right. you, Del. Thank you, Del. Glad you're watching, buddy. Hope you guys are safe and well. Tell Carolyn, thanks for the compliment. CDB. Those guys are great. All right, here comes another ball change for Trader. Okay. As he's going to throw his fill shot. Now, Kyle must strike so first ball rack. in the 10th unless Prather gets Thank you. eight or less. Uses his second re rack here on a fill shot. And that's simply just to ice Kyle Troop, I think, <sighs> which is perfectly legal. You like it? Yeah. In this case, why not? Mm hmm. Kyle is focusing on what he needs to do. The rear rack. A little help late. Mm -hmm. Nine. There it goes. Right. 227 for Prather. Dave, let's revisit. Last two shots on the right lane as we take a look at Prather's fill shot here. Trip in the 4 9 late. Great. Okay. What? Remember the last two shots for Kyle Troop with the urethane ball in the right lane? High, trips the you know the late uh, big four actually, and then the last shot was light with that blower uh, or that messenger coming across in front of the ten. Challenging right lane, true. This is the pocket and has the two ten split. Did it again, bro. It's two days in a row. Come on. It's the right lane, Randy. He's it's the theme. Ow. Can't convert. Shot anyways. Nice freaking shot, bro. So a tough finish for Kyle Troop in this first game of the race of two. Prather takes it. Leads one game to none. Wins the second game. He'll take group two for the opportunity to match up with Anthony Simonson to win the 2020 PBA Tour Finals. Brather has had so much success in big money events in the last year. Looking good here today.
One of the most respected voices in sports welcomes you to the jungle every weekday starting at noon Eastern. Join Jim Rome for his hot takes and off-the-wall calls weekdays here on CBS Sports Network. Race the two. Our third overall match. It's game two. Prater wins the first, 227-213 over Kyle Troop, the top seed. One more game win here for Prather. He advances to win group two and take on Anthony Simonson in the championship round. A lot of work to do first. Prather starts game two off with a strike on the left lane. Kyle, Randy here in the booth. Uh, tough loss in game one, uh, but not over yet. What adjustments are you going to make on the right lane? Honestly, Randy, I just need to throw it slower. Um, I wasn't happy with very many of my shots on that lane. So again, I've gotten fast in the moment. Uh, just trying to leave it behind me, though, now, because I need to make 10 good shots here in this game. All right, Kyle, thank you. Good luck. So you explain what, you know, what happened and why the ball didn't make it back to the pocket. It was too fast. And he starts in the right lane. He's going to stay with this. Let's see if he makes the proper adjustment. That's better. He liked it. That's why. All 10 back. That ball was perfectly placed into the pocket. As soon as he let go of it, he said, that's better. And look, I mean, he literally turned around when the ball was three quarters of the way down the lane. So obviously that's what he's trying to accomplish on that right lane. Great shot. Fantastic shot. Yep. And a really good start to his second game. And Kyle told us a few match that really felt like his head is in the right place very confident he could win this event. Now the big test. Down one game to none in the race to two. This is going to be a fight. I mean, this is going to be an old-fashioned fist fight right here. Bare knuckles and just, you know, roll the sleeves up and let's go. Another ball change for Chris on that right lane. Just trying to get something to read correctly and face up. Not sure if he was happy with that or what his thoughts were after this delivery, but it's still a strike. How close he is to the foul line. Perfect start for each here. Game two. Wow. Flush strike. Great shot. One three pocket there for Chris Prather. Lane two is really close to the foul line. Ooh, Randy. That's tight there. It's tight. Yeah, you, you, you might be able to get a piece of dental floss between the front of his shoe and the foul line. That looks pretty close. Line judge said it was good. Through. There's that right lane. Two pin stands for Kyle. Yeah, I I mean I, I don't like I don't like the bar reaction for Kyle with the urethane on the right lane. He, he's very good with the urethane. Don't don't kid yourself, but it almost looks to me like he has to be too perfect with that ball on the right lane. Anthony Simonson, Group 1 winner, will take on the winner of this match. Championship round. 2020 PBA Tour Finals. Winner of that takes home a PBA Tour title. A part of PBA history. Big prize money. We'll have it live for you on CBS Sports Network. That's coming up. Have to determine a Group 2 winner first. And Kyle Troop hopes Randy is correct in saying this will go to the extra frames. In one game each. Got a rally.
Chris Prather has other ideas. Plainfield, Illinois, outside Chicago. Lives there now, originally from Pensacola, Florida. Big time fisherman. Push. Well, when a player says push, that means they've got it inside of target a bit and they're asking for it to hold its line. The urethane bowling ball that's being thrown on the right lane by Kyle Troop is dragging all down the lane towards the head pin. Chris Prather is throwing into that same zone. This oil is moving down the lane. Now Chris Prather misses in a little bit. He's picking up some hold that's been created by the urethane bowling ball. All comes down to lane two. Strategy, equipment choice, pass to the pocket. Not quite. Looked like he got a little more hand in that shot, and it broke loose right at the end of, of the pattern, and that was all it took to drift a pinch high. Trying for a front five after the perfect start from the four for Prather. Used to love giving the pins the stare down after that. Like you saw Chris where he said trip it and then he just kind of, that slow moonwalk back where you're staring at the pin. There were so many obscenities that used to run through my head when, when I would look at like the eight pin or something, you know, and and just like, oh. And then of course. Why are you doing this to me, eight pin? And, and then of course I had to go to confession afterwards, so. Look at this, guys. Ball change for Kyle Troop on the right lane. He's going to reactive resin. All right. Be ready. What a beautiful shot. And now all he needs to do is duplicate it. It's a 10-pin game, and he can he can make right. it all even with a stroke here on the with a strike here on the You're sixth. You're right, range. Randy. Look at that ball change. Look at this. Okay. It's the way Prather's playing it. Simon was actually a little bit deeper and cutting the front the front part of the lane even more, but you know what? It's so hard to to get out of something that you have confidence in and switch midstream. Kyle's doing this out of desperation because he now feels like there's no way he can win if he stayed in that urethane bowling ball. But he should take that approach. I mean, you're down one game to none. You have to make a switch like that. I like it. Left lane. Two. Oh, that's unlucky. Yeah. Good that, shot. That was Seven a, pin up. That was a terrible break. Nine hundred seventy-seven pins, four-game total qualifying yesterday here for Kyle to be the leader. Two forty-four point two average. He liked it, and I was wondering why the seventh pin was still standing. Kyle Troop is thoroughly beside himself and disgusted. He made a huge change, a big move on the right lane. Stick around to see if it pays off for him, or will it be too much Chris Prather? Troop Prather rolls on. We're on CBS Sports Network. Live coverage continues of the 2020 PBA Tour Finals. Dave Ryan alongside the Hall of Famer Randy Peterson and our entire crew. Glad you could join us. And we hope wherever you are, bowling fans, you're safe today. Prather by 11. Run the first game. Can you read? Take a look at this delivery. This looks different. It almost looks like he kind of cuts this one off kind of short. It didn't really have the same kind of hand the other shots have had. I think he's fortunate and very pleased with the fact he only left the two pin. Yeah, his hand looked kind of different out at, at, at the point of release. And flirt with the channel there. Two pin has it. Single pin spare conversion. Six for him. There's a ten pin lead. Troop is working on a spare from his six to seven frames. 268 max for Prather. 258 max for Troop. Ten pin game. Troop has to win this to force sudden death. 
tell you what, I, I've, it's been a long time since I've seen Kyle in this type of, uh, this type of mood and, and, uh, demeanor. He's, uh, really not happy. Go! And now he's, he's got a, a now he's got a huge break. He's wow. got a big opening now, doesn't he? Three, six, nine, ten up here for Chris Prather. Troop on the bench who's been focused. Ready to go. This guy back here, Dave, that's the problem guy right there. Just trying to get that back pin, the nine pin. Nice cover for print. Yeah, that's perfect. But he loses some pins and counting out six. And with a strike here, Kyle, uh, strike in the seventh and eighth, Kyle Troop takes the lead. Here comes the tricky right lane. He made the ball change. That worked out for him. The top seed has got to win this game in a race of two, or it's over. And group two is won by Prather, who will take on Simonson for the championship. Must Huge have, shot. Must have. Got to have it. Does have it. Sure. Troop can actually shut sure. out Prather now. Yep, that's the right thought. That's the right thought process. Throw two good shots, sit back down. It's a gorgeous shot. And this shot here on the left lane equally as big. The last time on this left lane, he got robbed leaving that ripper seven. Big shot here. Perfect. Delivers again. Perfect. Back to back jacks from True. Big strikes. Has the lead by four pins. As Prather steps up for his eighth frame. Mr. Big Shot just steps up and hurls two of the best shots of the tournament for him. This is a race to two match. Prather won the first game. 227, 213. If we're tied after two games and Troop comes through here, ninth and tenth frame roll off determines the winner. Beauty. What a shot. Big strike on the right lane. Uh, Chris, foundation frame can take the lead back, right? It's going to go down the wire. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be an interesting shot coming up here on the left lane for Chris. He went four pin and then he went three, six, nine, ten. The last couple of shots have uh, been a little high and I'm wondering what's going through his mind right now. If there's a if there's a move coming, is, is he going to move his feet to the left and maybe leave his target the same and create a little bit more angle through the front? It's going to be interesting to see if he's making an adjustment on this shot. Be right. Take the lead right back. Yes, gets the tap of the 10, does the job. Well, there was definitely a move there. He moved farther to the inside part of the lane and did create a little bit of angle and then threw it perfect to get the ball to read and get back. But remember how straight he was going early? That's a good five boards left of where he was to start with when he was throwing it straight up second arrow. Foundation frame true. That's a big strike again. Yeah, and the, has the lead again, Randy. Yeah, the good news is he's off that lane. He needs two more and seven, and he's going to force sudden death. But that was a nice break right there, catching that light mixer. Kyle Trout makes the big move. What frame was that when he switched to that ball? I think he switched to that ball in frame four, didn't he? Or frame five, rather. Good frame. Got to have it. Gets it! What a shot for Kyle Troop left lane. What a comeback. Kyle makes the move and then absolutely labels the next six shots in a row. Wow. Got that just a, a gutsy, gutsy move. Switching balls on that right lane. He knew he had to get out of that urethane ball and then aces every shot after that. Is that Maple Moxie? That's just 
That, that, yeah, that is Maple Moxie. <laughs> Strike and seven. That's what he needs. Fifth straight strike, left lane, another one for Kyle Troop. He comes through big time. Now just seven will give him the win over Prather and force the ninth and tenth frame roll off to determine the group two winner. Let's see who takes on Simonson for the tour title. So if he gets seven or more, uh, are you going to say, hey, Randy, nice call or just going to let I'll it go? I'll say it right now. You're just going to let it go? I'm going to say it right now. Great call, Randy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's nice to be noticed every now and then. Looking for seven plus. He'll take a ring and ten pin. He'll take nine. He'll take the win in the second game. And the ninth, tenth frame roll off is coming up from Jupiter, Florida to see who wins group two. Just a great comeback by Kyle Troop. He got that break when. Prather left the 3 6 9 10 in the seventh frame and took advantage of it. Sudden death it is. Now it, it's got to be uh, Troop's choice of what lane he wants to start on, which would dictate what which lane he finishes on. And I'm going to guess he'll start on the right lane and finish on, finish the, on the left, left lane. <laughs> For sure. And make Chris Prather finish on the right lane. He posts 257. Prather <sighs> gets that one. What a comeback, wow. You know, to be able to step up like that, make the ball change, but not only do you make the ball change, you have to change completely how you're throwing it, how you're playing the oil powder, how you're playing the lanes. Remember he was throwing a urethane ball like fairly straight up, you know, five, six, seven, and then he moves in and starts throwing it sideways. And to be able to do that on the fly is a must on the PBA Tour. Ninth, tenth frame roll off is coming up. And we'll race the two to see who wins this group two. We'll roll right on with it. And live coverage continues here on CBS Sports Network. Oh, they already gave me zero. The winner takes it. <laughs> Anthony Simonson awaits the winner. Championship round. Sure enough, Prather's going to start on the left lane, and that makes him finish on the right. I mean, it had to be that way, right? I, I, I don't think there's any other way. Good prediction, Randy. There's a smile. There's a little personality. But wait, wait, wait a minute. The other way, the other way was working for him. You know, the other demeanor was working. But that's who Kyle Troop is. Big charisma, big personality. All right. Push. Yes. Off begins. Late tap on number ten. Good start here for Prater. So remember, folks, max score in a ninth and tenth frame roll off is 60. Troop starts in the right lane, finishes on the left. Every shot, a big shot now. Four pan down it goes. Are How you kidding about me? That for Kyle True. What a late roller on the four pin. What a huge break. Check this out. Ball drifts high, four pin standing. All right, well, just trust me, that happened. I trust you. It happened. Tenth frame. His strong lane, left lane, all ten back. Man, there you go. And I like that demeanor right now. I mean, this is the one where you got to just stay so focused to not get ahead and have that complete mind-body control, so you can get up there and deliver and execute perfectly.
Side 1-1, one, one, race to 2, ninth, 10th frame roll off. Perfect so far for Reach. Troop trying to finish out the 10th frame in style. Another strike. Remember, folks, everything that Kyle Troop does in this 10th frame, Chris Prather has to do the same thing. So if Kyle strikes on this next shot, Prather has to have three in the 10th on the right lane to tie. One ball roll off. If we're tied after the 9th and 10th frame roll offs. Just looking ahead, thinking about that. More shot here for True. This is the one that puts all the pressure on his opponent. Knowing that there is absolutely no wiggle room if he strikes on this shot. Good job! Oh, 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 baby. One for True. Zero wiggle room now. Chris Prather has to be perfect in the 10th frame. A couple of nice breaks. Listen to this. Never give up, baby. I love it. I love it. Sit, he has nothing left to do but sit back and watch that man right there. To tie and force a one ball roll off. Needs all three here in the 10th. I just know his dad, Guppy, eight time PBA Tour titles. He's pretty pumped up right now watching back home in North Carolina. It's all down to pretty. Got a habit. Gets it. That's a gorgeous shot. Wow. You know, the, the mentality is so much different when you know if you can strike out, you win by one. So if Kyle would have gotten nine, Trailer steps up and says, I can win this now with three in the tenth. It's a lot different than than knowing you need all three in the tenth just to tie. Just that you can't win. Just to tie. Mindset's a little bit different. One, needs ten. two, I left won't it. get it. There's the 10 pin. And Kyle Troop shot, wins. Wow, what a match. What a match. Group two goes to the top seed, Kyle Troop. <laughs> There's that personality. He is pumped up in a couple of two-handers. Pick it out. The pro with a fro is celebrating now because he's got a chance to win a PBA Tour title. In the championship round against the young star Anthony Simonson. This is fun to watch. Went to the ninth tank frame roll off as Randy predicted it would. And in the end, Troop, there it is. Got Troop win. The 2020 PBA Tour Finals on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Kyle Troop coming through. That's the top seed. Want to finish on that left lane. Never give up, baby. And he didn't give up. With a tremendous victory, ninth, tenth frame roll off over Chris Prather to win group two. He's joined now by Randy. Hey, thanks, Rhino. With me, Kyle Troop. And Kyle, I mean, that that uh, ball change that you made, game two, frame five, was amazing. Tell everybody was, what was going through your mind and why you went to that change. Well, uh, I felt like the match was on the line in that frame, definitely, Randy. Um, you know, I told myself I would just make better shots with the urethane. I did through the first strike, that two pin. I uh, knew I had to get out of it. Luckily, he did spare there, so I wasn't down 21 going into that frame, but I wasn't quite decided on which one I was gonna throw until I stepped up to the ball return, and I knew I had to make the change. And then you were able to ace every shot after that. How were you able to go from throwing it so straight to throwing it sideways, like uh, uh, with a coin toss? I mean, you went from this direction to that direction like it was nothing. You know, so luckily, Pretty much all the other guys that have been throwing resin have kind of given me a, uh, a clear path, you know, as far as like hooking it on the short pattern. 
So uh, I just had to commit to it. You know, I was shaking in my boots that frame because you know that's a big angle change for me. And and uh, but once I got the first one, then I was able to settle in, and I knew I was lined up on the left lane. Hey, congrats! Guess what? You get to face uh, your your roommate this week. Uh, it, it's an all two-handed finals. He's taking on Anthony Simonson, Rhino. Gonna be great to watch, RP. And thanks as always for the time from Kyle Tree. Little body English. <laughs> Having some fun out there, Kyle Troop. Celebrating a win over Chris Brader. Simonson next in the championship round. Kyle Troop knocks off 2020 TOC champ Chris Brader to win group two. Next up, Anthony Simonson. The battle of two handers and top seeds go for the PBA Tour Finals Championship. Now, Randy Peterson, the entire CBS Sports Network crew, Dave Ryan saying so long for now from Jupiter, Florida. We'll be back after the break to bring you the PBA Tour Finals Championship match from here in Jupiter. It's from a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Bowling fans, more is on the way.